Good morning, my friend. I'm actually in the middle of a study session right now, and I was just checking my emails. <laughs> I found another request for interview. This will be the sixth interview that I get in the pipeline for. I was just shocked at how long it took for this company to respond to my application because I submitted the application on a September 5th. Today is October 10th. It's a month and five days later and they're just responding to my application. I had no idea that it could take this long for a company to reach back out to you. I just thought it was a lost cause. So if you're applying to jobs a lot, and haven't been hearing back, just know that it's still possible that they reach out to you after a month and five days. Do not lose faith, because it's happened to me. Let's quickly make lunch. I have a panel interview, I should say three back-to-back one-on-one panel interviews right after lunch at one o'clock. So we're gonna make some very simple lunch even though it is simple it is the best sammy ever a couple years ago i went to boston and i went to this pasta shop uh, dave's fresh pasta in somerville massachusetts it's a pasta shop right like i thought i was gonna get a sandwich it's gonna be you know a quick meal not gonna be that great but it's gonna be quick boy was i wrong i got this prosciutto fig sandwich and it no joke, is the love of my life in sandwiches. Till this day, we're gonna make that. We have two slices of bread, some fig jam. This is the soul of the sandwich. It's nice when you get a little sweetness when you're having a savory prosciutto sandwich. I've interviewed so much in these past three weeks that I don't even get nervous anymore about interviews. The one later today is a behavioral interview. And I've noticed that most of the interviewers ask similar questions. I used to sweat so much about behavioral interviews, but now with practice, I've gotten so much better and I don't get nervous at all. Before, I used to spend two, three hours preparing for a behavioral interview. Now I spend an hour, if that. If you're not that great at behavioral interviews, don't sweat it. Just practice more. Earlier this week, we had another interview. I'm gonna put some mozzarella on the sandwich. The whole interview was only 30 minutes and the presentation was 15 minutes. And I thought the other 15 minutes was going to be, you know, questions on my presentation. But no, it was a behavioral interview with a cross-functional manager. And I was completely caught off guard. I asked my recruiter whether I should be prepared for behavioral interview questions. I didn't directly answer to that, so I just assumed that it wasn't going to be. You can imagine my surprise when the cross-functional manager asked me a question. I was like, ooh, 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 okay. But I think I've had so much practice now that I was confident to just pull up my Google Doc with all of my examples in it, and it just started going off. Okay, so now we're gonna put some red pepper flakes and pepper on our mozzarella and then start the show prosciutto and i think that interview went well too because the cross-functional manager our conversation went over the 30 minute designated time but afterwards he told me that he would be happy to jump on another call with me later this week, which I was very surprised by because very few managers, especially cross-functional managers, are willing to do that. So I took that as a sign that I did well. When I make these sandwiches, I never know like how many slices of prosciutto is the right amount because they're so thinly sliced. It feels like they're never enough, you know? Now we're gonna drizzle some olive oil on the sandwich. That was more like a, a dump than a drizzle, but... Ooh. And then the last step of the sandwich is some arugula. Wonderful. 
this is our finished product you know it's gonna be a good sandwich when it's big and messy like this after i eat and after my panel interview which is gonna last an hour and a half it's gonna be a lot of talking on my end i can kind of give you some tips on what i've learned and how i've been structuring my answers for my behavioral interviews and so far i think it's been working well for me i saw it's heavy oh boy just like a jaw I talked so much in the last an hour and a half that I, I don't want to talk for the rest of the day anymore. But uh, I think the calls went well. And let's dive into kind of what's been helping me to do my behavioral interviews. I largely follow the framework that Emma Ding has on her channel. And I can put that in the description box. Essentially, she covers the first question of a behavioral interview, which is, you know, tell me about yourself. And then the second part is kind of your project that's on your resume and the challenges that you encounter, both technical and non-technical, in your work. The third part, she also covers some other questions to prepare for, such as, you know, why do you want to work for us? I've noticed that this framework that she provided is very efficient in a sense that once you prepare it, you can kind of use it across the board for all of your jobs. First part is the kind of tell me about yourself part. I have to say I've had at least like 15 behavioral interviews now. I thought I would get asked this question every time, but actually it's not the most frequently appearing question you still need to prepare for it and there are like three parts to this tell me about yourself question the first part is to share your background and experience second is to connect your experience with the company's mission and value and third part is connect with the specific position and for the more detailed example you can go to her channel the second part the resumes and projects and this takes the most time to prepare and i think her approach is different than the traditional star approach which initially i was skeptical but after 15 or so behavioral interviews i've noticed that it works quite well like so for example for for one bullet point on your resume you talk about the goal of the project and what was the impact of the project and then you go in with the challenges and for the challenges you need to have a technical challenge and a non-technical challenge and here i kind of added my own twist to it for the challenges uh, for each challenge instead of using the star method or whatever emma was talking about in her video for each challenge i did a par and that's short for problem action and result and this worked well for me because it kind of consolidates what you have to say into a very short and easy to follow format so as an example if somebody asks me tell me about a time where you encountered roadblocks from a cross-functional team then i would go to my non-technical challenges. I can kind of go through my notes on Google Docs very quickly and find that portion. And then I'll be like, oh, a project comes to mind. This project is the first bullet point on my resume. The goal of the project was to improve ABC. The impact of the project is we improved our metrics by 5%. And during the project, there was resistance from a cross-functional team. Um, and here is the problem statement, right? There were resistant from the cross-functional team and they were resistant because A, B, and C. To kind of resolve that, what I did was A, B, and C. And as a result, we were able to finish the project on time and achieve our goal and hit the metric. 
right? So it's like very easy to follow. And there are keywords in there, such as the problem was, and the action that I took was, the result was. I think there are keywords that makes it easy to follow in a conversation. So yeah, for each of the bullet points, I have two of these PARs. One is for technical challenge, one is for a non-technical challenge. And I have like 10 bullet points on my resume. So that means I have like 20 of these organized in a Google Doc. Even though I wrote these PARs and challenges for every single bullet point, I've noticed the ones that I dive into the most are my most recent jobs. I wrote it for my first job out of college, but I, after 15 interviews, I have not talked about them at all. So, you know, if you are tight on time, just focus on the most important bullet points. And also, you know, once you write these goal impact challenges and then PARs, one time you can apply it to all of your interviews regardless of company. So, you know, it's a one-time investment. It's a lot of investment because you kind of really have to think about what happened five years ago. But it's a one-time investment. Once you've done that once, you're good to go for the rest of your interviews. And then the third part is the questions that you have to prepare for, such as, uh, why us? What are you looking for in your next role? What does a good team look like to you? These, similar to the um, your resumes and projects, do it once and you're good to go. Maybe you need to modify it based on the job, then I would just modify it before the interview. That's kind of the hour or so that I take before the interview to prepare for it. So for example, and this question actually came up a lot, the question of why us or similarly worded question. People never ask directly word for word, why us? People be like, you know, why do you want to leave your current position? Which is essentially asking why us? Or people would ask, what picked your interest about this role? Again, that's the equivalent of why us? So how I've been phrasing that question is, I would say, um, there are two main reasons why this position really caught my eye and the first reason is that I have x years of experience in xyz and I have been wanting to learn new things and seek growth and with this job I can really leverage my experience and hit the ground running. I am uniquely positioned to do that with my uh, key strengths in the past. The second reason is that for example this job mentioned a lot on opportunity for leadership then you could say the second reason why i'm really interested in this job is it has a focus on opportunity for leadership and that is a huge motivator for me i have an interest in roles where i can make a significant impact and a visible impact and at the same time make sure that i can help others to be successful at the same time so i think one really key thing here is to you know, really make sure that you are aligning this reason with the job. Second is when you're talking about it, really make sure that like I have a couple of reasons, however many reasons there are. Like for this instance, I said two, but then you have to say the first reason is, the second reason is, the third reason is, because I think in the past I had been so nervous when somebody asks me a question that I kind of lose track of where I am in my speech. And because there's so much that I'm talking about, the interviewer doesn't have that verbal cue to exactly what we're talking about and how many things you have talked about. But if you are like, the first thing is, the second thing is, the third thing is, that is a very distinctive verbal cue. And that applies to the next question too. Uh, what are you looking for in your next role? I also have two more points, I would say. In my next role, ideally, I'm looking for two main things. The first thing is that I want to ABC. The second thing is I want to EFG. This framework has gotten me quite far. I don't think I have failed a behavioral interview yet. I have failed technical interviews. It's been working well for me and I hope it helps you too.